Hi there, I'm Ian and this is Ian's Engage channel. As this is a fairly new channel, I thought I'd better give anyone watching a reason for its existence. So bear with me while I try and explain. The last model railway layout I had was back in the mid 80s. It was a double O layout, ran mostly diesel locos, but had regular preservation days that allowed the odd steam loco or three to run around the double loops. It was a fairly large layout which took up the majority of a 12 foot by 6 foot garden shed running along all four walls with a hole in the middle for the operator to, well, operate. Having worked in it for about five years on most evenings and weekends, it fell into disuse when I headed off to university and was taken down shortly afterwards. Now that was about 35 years ago and I've never once felt the need to revisit model railways since. So why now? Well, after watching the Hornby documentary that aired on the Yesterday channel just before Christmas last year, it brought back quite a few good memories, and I find my interest in the hobby being rekindled. The Hornby documentary series sparked a few conversations with Dad about model trains. Dad had been quite involved with the shed layout, and had done quite a lot of the scenic work. Unfortunately, any photos of the shed layout have been lost over the past three decades, However, while visiting Dad the other week, he just casually mentioned that all of the old locos and rolling stock were in a cupboard somewhere. Ten minutes later, I'd found several big boxes of stuff in a cupboard, and was wandering down memory lane with Dad again, as we unboxed several old friends, some of which I've been showing pictures of while I've rambled on. Anyway, as you can probably imagine, this further rekindled my interest in the hobby. So... Once the Hornby series had finished, I started reading up on the current state of the industry, just to dip my toe into the railway modelling waters again, you understand. Imagine my surprise to see how far the hobby had progressed. Being from a computer background, I was very intrigued by all things DCC, and its use suddenly became a necessity for me, even though I knew very little about it and didn't even have a layout yet. The range of available locomotives and rolling stock was much faster than I remembered, and the number of third-party companies that supported the hobby had grown immeasurably, which was fantastic news. YouTube was also playing its part in making the hobby more accessible to people like myself, where many talented people were giving up their time and effort to offer tutorials and advice to those in need of assistance. Track planning software was also a new addition to the track designer's arsenal, and was where I started my journey. After assessing a few applications, I ended up with Real Modeler Pro, which has made things so much easier than using a pencil and a book of graph paper, and of course a lot of erasers. However, having a track plan was the easy bit. The difficult bit was yet to come, namely making the track plan a reality. Now, while I've been wittering away about track planning software, you've been looking at one of the many track plans I've designed in the last few weeks. I consider this to be my ultimate track plan, the one I'd implement right now should I suddenly find myself with the time space, talent and funds to make it happen. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those things, so I've been working on a more modest plan for a project I've named Shelfington. Shelfington is, as you've probably guessed already, a shelf layout, and given that it's going to be implemented in a limited amount of space, the only realistic option was to build it in N-Gage. So Shelfington will be my first N-Gage layout, and hopefully this will give me many more operational possibilities than if I'd modelled it in double O gauge. My only prerequisites are that I'd be able to operate two trains at a time and that I'd be able to perform an ingle nook shunting puzzle on the layout. The layout has already had various configurations starting out on a 3 foot by 1 foot baseboard and is currently designed to sit on a 44 inch by 1 foot baseboard. However, I've also got a 4 foot by 14 inch piece of 12mm ply in the garage that is just begging to be used for this project, so things may and probably will change again. I've already purchased enough track to build this layout, have enough wood to build the baseboard and stand, and have some foam to raise the track off the baseboard, and also cork for the track bed. Other than wood, track, foam and cork, I've also spent a small fortune on new tools, electrical wires and connectors, paints, glues, models, and yes, I've bought a train a class 33 in fact, and some rolling stock. So, I'm all set for beginning to build my layout, 
but not for operating it. I'm now in the market for a DCC system. I've been looking at the NCE Power Cab starter set, but it's out of stock everywhere I've looked. I've also been taken by the DigiKeys DR5000. It looks like a wonderful bit of kit, but may be overkill for what I'm intending to build. So if anybody has any alternative suggestions for getting up and running with the DCC system on Shelfington, then please let me know in the comments below. So, I'm definitely financially invested in this project, but I think I'm more than that. I think it's something I could enjoy for years to come, especially if my plans for Shelfington come to fruition. OK, it's time for me to shut up, as I've rambled on for far too long. If you've got any hints, tips, useful tools or techniques to pass on to a beginner in N-Gage modelling, then please leave them in the comments below. Anything and everything you've got to add will be much appreciated. In the meantime, thanks for listening, and hopefully there will be an update on any progress I've made sooner rather than later. Bye.